next legacy. All right, this is Next Legacy Radio. I am branded in the house this afternoon, tonight, whenever you guys and girls are going to be listening to this worldwide. I have somebody who is family, who has been a part of this radio legacy that I built for years, right? And not only is he a music guy that I appreciate, respect, uh, admire, I mean, he has a catalog that I'm sure he wants to talk about. He has his thoughts on the music business that I'm sure he has his thoughts on. And I want to welcome home my homeboy, my brother, Hitman the Menace, on Next Legacy. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? What's up, Brandon, my G? Man, it's good to hear from you first off, you know what I mean? And I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you and I, you know, we touched bases for a minute, but we really haven't kind of dived deep into, you know what I'm saying, music, the business, the way shit is nowadays or whatnot. Because you and I had a conversation, um, you know, I kind of feel like we could let the world in on that conversation. You and I touched briefly on just how this business has changed. But before we talk about that, I need to make sure that, you know, people out there that will be listening, I want to make sure we get this man his flowers as far as his accomplishments. I mean, a lot of people out there in this business want to be known and noticed and have that notoriety. They want to be put in the mainstream, put on the pedestal, right? Um, Sometimes in life and music life, that shit just don't happen, but there's a lot of good music that you have created. You have a catalog hit, man, that, you know what I'm saying? It's like you won a couple of championships, and I just want people to remember that shit. Do you feel like when when it's all said and done, hit that the catalog that you have, you can hold that up against anybody and say, hey, I did this better than? Man, hey, listen, I know you could put my catalog from back in the day up against the niggas that was really doing the shit, and that was the real niggas, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't right, no right. Real- that cat's doing the music that we was doing at that time out right now. You know what I'm saying? But on um, shit, man, my, my, my catalog definitely can hold the test of time. You can listen to the music now, and it still resonate right now with what's going on right. today. You know what I'm saying? The sound, sonically, you know what I'm saying? The shit that we're saying, it, it goes along with what's going on right now. So, man, listen, hey, from from the guys from back in the day at our time, to these young cats, man, we we are blowing them out the water, <laughs> point blank, pig. And I feel like that's important to discuss and talk about because again, it's like it's like I said, man. You won a couple of championships. People need to forget. You can't forget about it. But also, as a music guy, like when you look back with the years and the music that you've made with so many different artists, and obviously yourself, you running your own business and your own brand. It's not just the sound, it's the feeling that comes with it, right? It's hella nostalgic, but at the same time, like you said, it, it will hold water still to this day in 2021. Yeah, man, it definitely would. But, you know, like as far as the nostalgic, man, you don't got that right now. You know what I'm saying? You don't You don't got the, you know, going to the studio, calling your homeboys up. Man, we're going to all meet up in the studio. This nigga bringing chicken. This nigga bringing pizza. Motherfucker got the beef. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Cats getting it in, writing their lyrics on the spot. I don't even know how these cats is doing it nowadays. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been around these cats, been in the studio with cats for years to even know how they're doing it. If they still doing it on Pro Tools, they sending it or not. I don't even know if they sit next to each other doing songs no more. You know what I'm saying? Shit is so fucked up in the rap game right now. But, hey, man, it is what it is, man. I still love the music. You know what I'm saying? I'm still doing it. And, yeah, support to everybody that's doing it, still making the money. Why do you think that is, though? I mean, because everybody I talk to, and you know this, too, because you've been a part of it. You mentioned it yourself. Everybody that, that has the memories is attached to exactly what you said. You got a nigga bringing in chicken. You got somebody bringing in the weed. You got somebody bringing in X, Y, Z, right? So why do you think, is it because it's too accessible now? You know how it is, bro. Like now it's too easy to get to whatever. So do you think Do you think a lot of people just are more hands-off now and they just kind of let it be what it is versus how it was back in the day? Man, all I can tell you 
it was more love back in the day. It was more camaraderie. Mm. It was more of being a clique. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, you know what I'm saying? And we always had one nigga that was always the top dog. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, you that top dog, a nigga want to take you out. A nigga want to kill you. Whether it's your man, the nigga you brought in the game, your family. So it's like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're trying to do wow. the right thing, but at the same time, you're trying to do the right thing. These cats are trying to take your head off. Do you feel that as a, and I feel like, cause, I mean, you know, you got a hard time entertainment. You're the CEO of your business. Do you feel like if you got people like that, but is it more important as far as if you have a business that you want to run? And trust me, I, I went through this recently, bro. Like, it's always somebody that will micromanage what you should or shouldn't do, no matter how giving you are and how accessible you are to the product, right? So, do you feel like it's just a matter of like, man, at the end of the day, I can't work with a group of hell of people. I just got to dumb it down to like a group of a few. Man, you don't got to dumb shit down. You know, that's what these motherfuckers want you to do and put all this whack shit out. Do what makes you comfortable. Do what makes you move. Fuck all these industry motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, and these record. I don't even know these motherfuckers no more. They weirdos. They gay. They do whole bunch of shit that you don't agree with. And if you agree with that shit, you're going to do fuck shit to get the money. But if you a real nigga, if you move the way you're supposed to move, you know what I'm saying, you're going to do what you want to do, you know what I'm saying, and not what they tell you to do. Because you see, nowadays, it's not no formula into doing music. You don't need the record labels. You don't need motherfucking um, million-dollar video, video budget and all that shit. You got YouTube. You got Instagram, you got all that type of shit. Motherfuckers are getting famous and making mad money off of being off of Instagram on YouTube, doing comedy, mm -hmm. doing dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just getting going viral for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Just making a whole bunch of fucking money while niggas is motherfucking, um, you know, slaving for the music industry, trying to be the next big thing selling your soul, and these motherfuckers just did this shit, just got off the porch, been rapping for about 15 minutes, and now look at them. They got a single out. They got shit on TikTok, kids dancing to them, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? That's the the, that's, um, the generation we living in now as far as the music. That's the way the shit go. <laughs> and, and you preaching right now. Hitman the Menace is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. Follow that man on IG at hitman underscore the D-A underscore menace, M-E-N-A-C-E. -E. Um, what, what's been, I mean, you, 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 you're saying a lot right now. What's, what's been the biggest, biggest thing that you've seen, I want to say, since COVID? Like, because I know COVID changed a lot of people's uh, lives and livelihoods and, and shit like that or whatever. But when it comes to you personally, not just the personal shit that you've seen, but also in this music business. What, what, what's been eye-opening for you over the last year and a half? Man, shit. Man, it's a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in the industry, but I try not to be in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because the, the way this shit is right now, it'll turn you into a totally, completely different person than you were when you first came in the industry. If you ain't right. mentally strong, you know what I'm saying, your, your mind ain't strong, you, 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 you don't know, motherfucker, how to say no, and you're you going to say yeah to everything, thinking you're going to be hooked right. on drugs, you're going to be in the back room sucking off executives, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be doing all <laughs> types of weirdo shit, you know what I'm saying? So, man, man. Right. I don't even follow suit. I do what I want to do, and that's how I've been doing shit. You know what I'm saying? I do what I want to do at my leisure when I feel like it. I put my own money up for everything as far as videos concerned, um, radio play, anything I ever did in life. You know what I'm saying? To this day, you know what I'm saying? I don't need the music. You know what I'm saying? The music need me, you know? So right. I just lay back. And I run my course. I just sit back and, and look at what everybody's doing, what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I got an opinion, but I keep my shit to myself. You know what I'm saying? Because my opinion ain't for the <laughs> world. And, and, and the way the shit is right now, everybody got a fucking 
like like they sensitive. You can't say nothing about nobody these days without somebody catching feelings. And the shit that I say, you definitely gonna catch fucking feelings. So you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say shit at all. I used to say that same shit about comedians. Like the comedians dumbed it down because you know how it was hit back in the day. It was no holds bar. Like you had you had so many different shows that went in on certain celebrities, right? Now it's just like, all right, I need to I need to not talk about him or her because I don't want no backlash and I don't want to fuck off the responsibility of trying to work with that person at the end of the day. I look at it like this, bro. Music or entertainment or anybody in this business, if you do some dumb shit or if you do something that's worthy of a conversation, good, bad, or indifferent, you should be talked about. And if you got feelings off that, then, hey, that's on you because you sparked that conversation. If it's something inspiring or if it's somebody on some dumb shit. And that's real, right? Man, listen. Everybody get talked about, you know what I'm saying? Like you, as, like you said, a comedian. Comedian can't even be a comedian no more. You can't say right. certain words. You can't talk about certain people, you know what I'm saying, without somebody getting mad and what's the shit, the cancel culture, all that type of motherfucking <laughs> shit. Like, God damn. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, you can't say shit about gay people. Without motherfuckers want to cancel you, you can't say shit about white people without motherfuckers cancel you, right? But these motherfuckers could say shit about niggas, talk about black people, kill motherfuckers, do all types of shit that get caught on video, on camera, on 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 voice message, and still get away with it. But let us talk about some motherfucking crackers. Let us talk about some faggot that we don't even agree with. You know what I'm saying? But they throwing it down our throats every day of the week, every other day. I'm saying shit about gay people. Shit that I don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? That, that don't right. mean I hate them. But my, my, my shit, I don't want my kids around that shit. I, a man is a man. A girl is a girl. All that gay shit. And listen, we got enough shit going on in America but all without that shit, you know what I'm saying? But they want to throw that in our face. Politics, motherfuckers getting killed. At the end of the day, um, there's, there's too much going on in the world. Too much. So what the fuck you got to deal with with, with with the white shit, with the black shit? Going outside, you can't even fucking walk your own neighborhood without a white motherfucker from your neighborhood questioning you. I've been in this neighborhood 20 motherfucking years. You just moved in right. this neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And that's the type of shit we got to deal with. Well, hey. What's been the What's been the thing? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna throw something your way because I feel like you you hitting on some some conversation or some topics that literally needs to brought be brought up, not just in this entertainment business, but also in the culture, the society that we live in. Like we we all feel like, and you and I, we can both agree that you know what I'm saying things have changed when you when you compare it to how things moved in the, let's just go 70s, 80s, 90s, things are different. The last 30 years have, have, have you know, it, it's been different. So here we are in this new stage and this new age of living, and people are still living backwards with a backwards mentality, with, you know, how business minds should work. You know, I always believed and preached and teach that, you know what, we're better together. You know what I mean? Like if you've got a specific skill set and I have one, you and I don't hate on that next man. We will embrace that, and we will keep it pushing and trying to be able to build that brand. People don't do that no more, hit man. So black businesses and businesses in general, why does it seem like it's hard? Let's just put your business for an example or mine or whatever you want to put out there. Why is it hard? I'm going to cut you, man. Listen, I'm going to cut you off because I know where you're going. Niggas can't get together because niggas can't do shit with other niggas. It's like a black man don't want to help another black man. Your motherfucking nigga that you yeah. grew up with. You know what I'm saying? Nigga could be a millionaire, a thousandaire, making money. He don't want a motherfucker see you fucking grow. He don't want to help you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he'll help the next motherfucker that don't, he don't know. The, the record executive or, 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 or somebody else he don't know. You know what I'm saying? Buy him a watch. Buy him jewelry. You know what I'm saying? You see these niggas giving niggas money. You know what I'm saying? Buying niggas houses and cars and shit. I think they gave fucking each other in the ass, but that's another story. But you know what I'm saying? They never give the homies that shit. They don't bless the block right. with that shit. They'll get money and go somewhere else and hook other niggas up. 
You know what I'm saying? But 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 you see these white motherfuckers, they'll get together, these Indian motherfuckers, these Puerto Ricans, these Dominicans, they own these stores. They own these houses. They doing shit together. Buy shit the fuck yep. buy shit the fuck up. What niggas doing? Niggas don't want to get a job. Motherfuckers don't want to get no skills. Niggas ain't trying to learn shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the next motherfucker trying to do. But me, myself, I, I got a skill. I'm putting my daughters through college. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to depend on no nigga. And I'm doing what I got to do. I ain't doing what these other niggas doing, sitting on my ass, smoking weed, selling drugs, and, you know what I'm saying, killing motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's that right. back-in-the-day shit, that mentality. Right now, what the way right. shit is, nigga, you can learn. You can do more than you really want to do. But niggas don't want to do shit. You know what I'm saying? They want to sit and wait on the next man. And, and, and rob and steal this nigga. You know what I'm saying? But mm. fuck that. Go get yep. this white motherfucker. Go in this this white neighborhood and do that shit to them crackers. Nah, you gonna take something from a nigga that ain't got shit less than you. And, and that's the fucking crab, the, the crab in the barrel mentality that niggas got. You know what I'm saying? We from the hood, right. living in the hood, doing hood shit to our own peoples. But we gonna do that shit to them crackers. Niggas know better. Don't do that shit to the motherfucking crackers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But fuck mm. that, man. Niggas need to get off their ass. You can get money. I can get money. It's more than enough money for all of us to get. But niggas is worried about Absolutely. the next man's pockets. I ain't worried about your pockets, nigga. Whatever you driving, nigga, I'm driving. We cool at the end of the day. We can meet up and make money together, or I can do my thing, yep. do your thing, and we can all live without killing a motherfucker, talking bad about a motherfucker. Like, come on, there's too much hate going on. Niggas hate us already. You know what I'm saying? We're killing ourselves. we just making it easier for these motherfuckers. Right. Hitman the Minute is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. And I'm going to tell you a story since you kind of segue into that. I'm going to tell you a story I saw on um, social media or whatever. Like, uh, I, I saw an interview with um, DJ Yella, uh, the famous NWA, obviously, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and all that, right? So, and this was recently. So he was on an interview saying that he was literally like, in a one-bedroom apartment, uh, you know, literally the only reason why he got out of being homeless was because he got, you know, he was connected to his girl, got married, and things got somewhat better for him. But meanwhile, and, and I'm not, you know, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it, you know, meanwhile, Dr. Dre is a billionaire. He sold his, uh, you know, he sold his shit to Apple. He's a billionaire. Ice Cube's doing his thing. You know, I don't know what status Ren has, but when you look at people like that, I look at it, and I looked at it like this, hey, man. If I had a group that I basically changed the world together with, right, it should, be easy, it should be easy for me to reach out to him or her and see if whatever's going on in their life, I don't care if it was a proactive, initiated, whatever the fuck, right, if I'm a millionaire, and I see somebody that's not living, you know what I'm saying, for whatever reason, man, I got I got to help that dude or that female right at the end of the day. It, to me, it's just, it's just an honorary thing. If that was my brother and we went through shit together, you know what I mean? And I feel like you would do that for me. If I was in a situation where I'm struggling and if you was a millionaire, you would reach out to me and be like, hey, you good? Is there something I can do? Not just give you some money. Let's, put, let's get to work. Let's go do blah, blah, blah. You agree or not? Man, listen, you know I can speak on this every day, all day, because I go through it, I've been through it, you know what I'm saying? But the whole thing is you can't get mad at it and let it consume you and make make you mad at the world and that person, all right? This is right. my take on it, you know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. listen, man, you can get money, and at the end of the day, money can change you or money can make you a better person, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and if you a fuck nigga from the beginning, you're going to be a fuck nigga at the end. You know what I'm saying? So so the situation is a nigga getting money, and either you're going to help out your peoples or you're going to tell these niggas, fuck y'all, ain't going to help y'all niggas out at all. And nine times yeah. out of ten, what I've been seeing, what I, what I go through, niggas ain't trying to fucking help you, man. You know what I'm saying? A nigga, gonna, a nigga rather see you... See you struggling and watch you struggle, knowing that you're struggling, and don't give a fuck. And niggas got money, 
You know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't got to give you a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? All this, you know what I'm saying? Niggas a trick on these holes, flying these holes in one way on the spot for $3,000 one way, right? Putting these holes up and shit, buying them champagne, licking their ass, buying them booties, titties, and, and all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? But right. won't do shit for the homies. Won't bring the homies on tour. They don't want the homies to see that life. They don't want homies to, you know what I'm saying, get out the ghetto and, 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 and get a business and all that. From what I've been saying, niggas just want to bring niggas along to be yes men, carry their bags, be little bitch boys on the road, you know what I'm saying, or some mm. shit like that. But when it's some good shit, niggas don't get invited to the good shit. You know what I'm saying? Where 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 where's a lot of shit going on? You just get invited to the hood shit, where where you around? You know what I'm saying? A little strand. You know you can be seen and all that. But at the end of the day, man, niggas ain't taking you on the road trying to build 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 a fan base with you, bring you in and let you get a business, a piece of their business. Nah, nigga, you gotta sell late merch, do everything for them. You know what I'm saying? And if you do something mm. for you. It's a bad thing. Oh, what you doing? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Niggas send you home. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And that's foul. You know what I'm saying? Niggas supposed to always help your peoples out. But niggas ain't trying to help their peoples. Niggas want their peoples to be slaving for them like these crackers is doing and not pay them. You know what I'm saying? It, it's niggas that's been right. working for a whole bunch of these rappers that's broke as hell. Niggas ain't got no, 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 no condo. Niggas ain't got no cars. Niggas ain't doing shit. And nine times out of ten, niggas got to meet up with these niggas, catch an Uber, catch a ride from somebody else. These niggas ain't yep. sending no, no limousine or no, no, no nothing to pick these niggas up. Man, you better get there how you get there, homie. That's <laughs> how these niggas are treating these niggas, man. And that's foul. Rappers, fuck these mm. rappers, man. Niggas need to do their own thing and stop depending on these niggas. That's number one. Because once you start depending on these niggas, these niggas know what you want to be in the limelight. You want to be under this nigga. Like, man, fuck all that fame shit, nigga. Get money. But, hey, man, who am I? Hey, giving game to the world. That's who you are. Hitman the Minute is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. And make sure y'all hit that man up on IG. You know what I'm saying? Hitman underscore the underscore minutes. And um, one, one thing I always respect about your music talent is the fact that, you know, not just, you know, you said it earlier that you did a lot of this shit yourself. You funded your own brand. You cultivated your own brand. You got people that was down for, you know, enhancing that next level, be it if it's videos or being in the studios and all this other shit, right? So that's one thing I respect about you being that businessman. Another thing I respect about you is you 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 don't you don't quit. You know what I mean? No matter what's going on and who's going on in your life throughout highs and lows, whatever, personally, professionally, all that, you maintain a solid, respectable vibe when it comes to that. So I'm I'm gonna give you I'm gonna ask you something on the uplifting stage as far as that goes. Like, you know, you may have a love hate relationship with music, but music's always gonna be a part of you because your catalog is that strong. So when you reflect back and you think about all the good shit that went on, you know, prior to you saying that, yo, I want to do this music to now just being, you know, a cultivator of your masters and doing what you need to do because you own all your shit, pull up some positive shit that you can reminisce on and just be like, man, this was fun when we were doing dot, dot, dot. Oh, shit, man. That's a lot of fun shit, man, but, but. My my funnest time in this, doing this music shit, honestly, when I was doing shit with my boy Fatal, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to my nigga Hussein Fatal, you know what I'm saying, man? Doing that 1090 Fitch album, man. Um, we did about, actually, about shit. About three albums worth of material. I still got shit left over from that that I ain't never put out. And what was that? Wow. What, what? 20 years ago, 1090 official? Yeah. Man, it's got to be going on 20 years almost, man. But, um, man, we had a great time filming that. Well, not filming, but, yeah, I, I did a lot of behind-the-scenes footage of that. I got a whole bunch of fucking videos of me and Fatal in the studio, but I, I, I lost all the fucking, as far as the camera equipment. I still got the the actual the CDs, the DAT, the DAT CDs or the fucking VHS. I still got all of them. But, man, that was mm -hmm. a great time doing that whole shit with Fatal in the studio, um, doing shows, um, 
man, that was a blast. I wish we could do that whole shit over again, man. That whole Halo, that outlaw run, pop run, man. That was a great. That was a great time, man. Yeah. When you uh, when you also reflect on that that you know that history, that time, not just with Fatal, rest in peace, um, but just the passion that you know everybody had. I mean, did it go back to what we was talking about earlier, right? Everybody was in the studio. Everybody was doing what they was doing. We was all supporting each other at the end of the day, right? Same kind of vibe, right? Oh man, it was it was man, and shit. You know how it was, man. Like 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 waking up in the morning. Seeing this nigga aggravating ass motherfucker chilling with him all day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Niggas ain't had no job, motherfuckers was hustling. So, you know what I'm saying? That shit was cool in itself, you know what I'm saying? We took that shit for granted. Like, 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 mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Being with a motherfucker all day in the studio, like from sun up to sundown, you never would think, like, I didn't think that, you know, how people look at Dizza, Fatal, you know what I'm saying? He was just a regular nigga to me. This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? We boys, we friends. Right. We, you know, smoking weed, doing other dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Getting into arguments, fussing and fighting, and, and, and going to the studio and recording that shit, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, right. man, it's, it's, it's all love. And, you know, I wish I could do that shit all over again. That was the best time I had, man. And, you know, like I said, rest in peace to my nigga Fatal, man. That was the best time, man. You know? I wish we could do it all over again. That was the best time we could ever have, man. I mean, that's all I could say. That shit right there, boy. In life, I, I feel like that sometimes you are, you know, sometimes you wish you could have, you know, not just run it back, but, you you know, I don't want to say regret because to me it is what it is. I mean, with anything that you happen or you go through in life, I mean, it is what it is. But when you have flashbacks or you think about those those times, you really wish that you had, you know, obviously hindsight, 2020, I mean, life's too short, all that shit, right? But do you wish that, you know what, hey, I wish we could have that same kind of camaraderie that we had back in the day because, you know, now it's just like a war over the fucking phone that we can't sit and talk like men or we can't just break bread like men. Now we got to go through some extra shit. I still feel like we could do that. But when you dial it back back in the day, it, it, it was important to be able to have those moments, right? Those good moments laced with that shit. So then if you have bad moments, you can sit down, you can talk like, man, you can do what you do. To me, that's missing. I wish we still had those moments. Yeah, back in the day, you can call a nigga up. You can meet on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Slap box. Do all that good shit, you know what I'm saying? Even a few times, shoot out and stabbings, you know what I'm saying? And still be cool after that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but I don't know, man. Right now, it's just a whole different vibe, a whole different feel. It's like it, it's not the same, you know what I'm saying? I, I already know what it is, but, you know, I live from back in the day. I don't live the way these cats live now. In my mind, I'm still back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Even though we right here right now, that's how I live my life, you know what I'm saying? As a real nigga, I don't do what these niggas is doing on Instagram, doing shit for likes and doing dumb shit, looking goofy and all that, arguing with niggas right. on the internet. And, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for all that. I ain't been doing it, and I ain't about to start doing it. I ain't trying to get famous that way, you know what I'm saying? If I got a problem with a nigga, you know what I'm saying, I can hit you up. And I could call you on my own. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. If it ain't that, nigga, you know what it is, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? However the fuck you want to do it, we can do it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a grown man. Exactly. There's no need for all that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm on my business. I don't fuck with nobody. Niggas don't fuck with me. And we need to keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Right. But, you know, motherfuckers and everybody business. They say if you're doing good or you're doing bad, a motherfucker going to talk about you, and that's the truth. So, you know what I'm saying? Just do what the fuck you do. Don't worry about motherfuckers what they say. As long as a person don't fucking physically touch you, you know what I'm saying? Niggas going to say all types of dumb shit to get under your skin. Fuck your mama. Fuck your kids. Your dead homie. All that dumb shit. That's cool, nigga. Yeah. I say, yeah, fuck them too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they dead. Yeah, okay. Nigga, you motherfucking touch me, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Niggas don't want to fight. Niggas want to shoot. Niggas want to, at a distance, niggas ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, put the motherfucking hands up the motherfucking knuckle games because niggas ain't got that. Motherfucker going to shoot right. you, and they dumbass going to go to jail forever 
You know what I'm saying? Because there's cameras everywhere, so they ain't even thinking. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers just doing dumb shit and, 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 and just like, oh, fuck. Getting fucking caught. <laughs> like, nigga, come on, man. <laughs> I knew you was going to get caught, but hey, man, I don't know if it's the drugs or it's the society that we're living in. Niggas just don't be giving a fuck no more. Right. What's the uh what's the what's the future looking like for hard time entertainment? I know I feel Man. like I'm I'm asking a question that I I'm I'm future looking, right? I'm looking at the next five, ten, twenty years. Obviously it's a catalog that's gonna be able to feed your kids, obviously, but the business side of hard time entertainment, what 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 does the future hold in store for it? Man, I'm gonna keep it real, man. I I, I make more money being a regular ass nigga, being a working man, than I do music. You know what I'm saying? My house, my cars, putting my kids through college, that shit came off of me having a skill. You know what I'm saying? Music mm -hmm. is cool. It's a hobby. It's a great way to get pussy, money, and girls. You know what I'm saying? Weed and all that shit. But at the end of the day, man, I ain't going to be no struggling ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to have me right. trying to pretend to be pretend to be somebody or something that I'm not, and, and everybody thinking highly of me, and, and I ain't really that dude. I ain't got the money. I ain't got the, the, the none of that, you know what I'm saying? But I got a song out. I'm slaving for that song, you know what I'm saying? I'm paying these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. They raping you, and you really ain't getting paid. That's why you don't see your favorite artists, all your back-in-the-day artists no more. Because this is a whole right. bunch of bullshit that go into this music game, man. And if your mind, and if you ain't financially stable, really, you ain't going to go nowhere. You're just going to get songs played on the radio, getting a couple of cents. But at the end of the day, man, you a motherfucking crackhead. You a bum. You ain't got nowhere to stay. The record, the music business don't love you. They just wanted that motherfucking song out of you. But, but, but you went through blood, sweat, and tears for that song. You poured your heart out for that song. And what these motherfuckers do, take that shit from you. You know what I'm saying? They, they did some fuck shit you don't even want to talk about, and you don't even want to be in the industry no more. You know what I'm saying? So you go right. be in a civilian trying to get a regular job. Nah, man, it ain't going to be me. You know what I'm saying? The music is cool. I'm going to keep it real. The music is good. It's my music is out there. I'm getting money. But at the end of the day, I ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying, trying to live off of that, trying to live off of tours trying to, you know what I'm saying, slave off of shit, and at the end of the day, these motherfuckers making more money off of my music than I'm making. That can't happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? I own my right. shit. I make all my money back off of my music. You know what I'm saying? Me and my motherfucking cousin Tyler. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, man, I love this music shit, but this music shit don't love you. My catalog is out there. Hard timers. I'm entertainment. Love and support. But at the end of the day, I do my music when I feel like it. If I feel like putting a single out today, I put one out. If I feel like putting one out six months, a year from now, I'll put one out. If I don't feel like doing shit, I ain't going to do shit. I'm just going to drive around looking flying, going on vacations, doing what the fuck I do. Niggas know who the fuck yep. I am. I don't need this music shit. This music shit needs me. That's what's important, and that's what separates you from, you know what I'm saying, everybody else, because you do control control all your shit. And here's what, I, here's what I, I'm going to say to you on air, live for the first time that you probably haven't heard. Like you, and you and I have a history, you know what I'm saying? You've done a handful of shows of Hard Time Radio, and we have a lot of, we have a lot of content that I feel like the world needs to be, you know, informed because just in case of people didn't hear it live, whatever the hell, right? You have the same thing with your music. You have a gold mine of content that you've created for years, if not a couple of decades or whatever, right? So I always feel like with this whole business plan that I have, and we can talk off air about the rest of this shit, that you have something that you worked so hard for that it's just like those diamonds that you can't find or that gold in that gold mine that people try to dig and try to find and shit like that, and it's important. So the cool thing about you, Hitman, in a minute is, is that you actually did all the hard work for the last 10, 20 years or whatever 
that set it up to this point right now that you can be able to, as a businessman, you can see, okay, well, you know what? If I put in all this original work, I need to make some original money. And you can do that. We talked about this too. Work smart, not hard. Do all this extra shit. But that's the reason why. Like, I was like, you know what? Let me reach out to this dude and not just tell you that I appreciate you for all this shit, that you got something still in you, past and future that you can be able to have your kids and your kids' kids can eat off this shit forever, right? And I think that a lot of people tend to forget that from time to time, and that's the reason why business is open, just to make sure that, you know what, I want this business to be ran by my kids when I'm gone and their kids and all that other shit. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that it's not just the music that you created and the business that you created. You did all that hard work shit, man for this moment, not just to give you your flowers, but to also let you know that you got all this gold and this diamonds and these little caverns that need to be put out there, polished, and appreciate, my nigga, because a lot of people don't, you know what I'm saying, they don't do this shit like they should, but again, it's all about assembling the right moment, the right time, the right team, and the right effort to make sure that's, that's, that's out there, and again, it's all about working smart, not, not hard, you feel me? Man, listen, man, whatever we got to do, man, whatever you need before, you already know I'm there. You know, at the end of the day, I'm hit, man, a menace. I'm going to talk my shit. That's what I've been doing. I'm not going to change for no <laughs> industry, motherfucker. I ain't going to change for no motherfucking money. I ain't going to do none of that fucking gay shit that Jar Cats is doing today. Let's get that straight, number one. You know what I'm saying? So, right. man, listen, when it comes to this money, man, you over there at motherfucking on the West Coast. I'm over here in New Jersey. Man, listen, it's always been love. We can always make money. It's more than enough money to be made. I ain't got to be the leader of this motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, we both leaders. We both bosses, man. We can we can Amen. put our minds together. We can do shit together without me being mad at you or having any animosity. We're going to always say what we got to say. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you this, fuck you that, hang up. You know what I'm saying? Get back together at the end of the day because that's what motherfuckers do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, we ain't fighting at each other. We ain't stealing from each other, man. They ain't they ain't my thing. I don't I don't do that to my people. I ain't trying to steal from you. If I can't help you get money, you can't help me get money. Why the fuck we gonna be around each other, hating on each other, <laughs> or trying to steal from each other for? That don't make no motherfucking right sense. And and I ain't going to jail. Not at this age, I'm going backwards, man. I'm nah. going great in life. So, right. man, let's get this money out, whatever means necessary, if we ain't got to go to jail to hurt nobody. That's what it is, man. And to leave, and to leave something for our kids, man, that's the mission, right? Leave something for our kids, period. You know what I mean? So they won't have to go through the struggle that we had. That's the mission. Hey, man. That's the mission. Hey, I'm going to tell you about these kids, too, man. These motherfuckers are spoiled. They brats, too. You know, they, they don't want to listen. You know, so at the same time, you got to teach these kids, too. You can't let Instagram be the motherfucking teacher. The, ki- the teachers don't right. even want to be teachers. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 they always putting shit off on other people. I take accountability for my kids. I, I do as a father what I got to do for my kids. I don't let society, I don't let politics, I don't let nothing get in the way of my motherfucking kids and me being a great fucking father and being there for my kids. No man should have no excuse why they're not there for their fucking kids doing what they got to do in their kids' life. My kids are fucking going to college, doing great in school, doing great in everything they're supposed to be doing, you know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't have it no other way. Amen to that. Amen to that. Hitman the Minute is my guest on Next Legacy Radio. And in, and in closing, look, we going to continue to do what we got to do to get not just your catalog out there to a higher plateau, but the real shit that comes with running a, a music entertainment company or whatever it is. Like, you know, we don't have to, we don't have, like you say, you, we don't have to sell your soul. We, we don't do that. We don't do that. We, it's all about each one, teach one. Um, over the years, from a distance, you being out there on the East Coast, you taught me a lot about just, stuff just by observing you right you know what i mean and and hopefully we can be able to just you know have that same um you know i'm saying collaboration so we can be able to just move forward and grow and that's really the uh the mission man so man uh not only do i appreciate you 
Um, I'm going to run your music because, you know, obviously it's the 24-7 station where we control our own content. You know what I'm saying? Again, flowers given because you deserve it, bro, not just because you the homie. And, and that's just the that's just the God's honest truth, bro. So, you know, like I said, man, we got a lot. We still got a lot to do, but at the same time, it won't even hurt your, your, your other shit you're doing. It's just a matter of growth and, and, and obtaining power, and that's what it is, bro. But I'm proud of you, though, up top. All the shit you ever done, music, new music, all this shit, classic shit, all that. Salute. Hey, man. Thanks for the love, and um, shout out to you and your family, man, because you've been there for me since day one, man. I ain't even going to front. We go back since fucking, um, fucking MySpace. Shit. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> yes, sir. That, yes, man. sir. Like, oh, man. Like, I don't even want to put the age out there, but, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Love you, boy. <laughs> Next Legacy.